On the last episode or episodes of 20 Credit Playthrough, we played through Midnight Wanderers, a run and gun released by Capcom to the arcades in 1991. This game was part of a multi-game arcade cabinet named Three Wonders. After defeating Midnight Wanderers, main protagonists Lou and Siva are granted some kind of gliders and go about setting things right in the land. The next game on the cabinet is called Chariot and picks up right where Midnight Wanderers left off. Except this time, it's not a run and gun, but rather a horizontal shoot 'em up. So, without further ado, let's review. Every time I put out a video like this, I try and do some extensive research. But all I found were quick blurbs about the game, almost as if no one really knows much about it. What I can tell you though, is that this collection received a port to the PlayStation and Sega Saturn, and then was featured in the compilation, Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2 for PS2 and Xbox, and Capcom Classics Collection Remixed for PSP. Additionally, Lou was featured as an assist character in the first Marvel vs. Capcom, as was his sidekick Firebrand. If another Lou shows up on screen, then the colors will change to that of Siva. Speaking of Siva, this character went on to have a character based off of him in Cannon Spike. I know, if you had watched the Midnight Wanderers videos, then I had already mentioned all of this, but like I said, not a whole lot of information out there. Now as for the game, this horizontally scrolling shooter is a blast to play. You play as either Lou or Siva and you are riding the chariots. Throughout the levels you will find power-ups and parts to collect. Various power-ups will change the strength and positioning of your shots. The hearts are there to try and fill up the heart extend counter found in the lower left corner. If you happen to hit the target that is shown, then you will be granted a 1-up. There's also another power-up that will add an extra armor to your chariot and allow you to take an additional hit. You know, speaking of additional hits, let's talk about the tail options. The tail lengthens when you pick up orbs throughout the stage. What your tail does for you is it creates a shield of sorts that covers your rear. If you damage a foe with a tail or it absorbs a shot for you, then part of the tail will be exposed temporarily until it regenerates itself. It does this rather quickly, so you don't really have to worry about using that too sparingly. Another way that your tail becomes exposed is when you use a bomb. The bomb is more of a charge shot that causes additional damage to your enemies. The longer your tail, the stronger the shot will become. However, bombs are limited, so you do want to be frugal with those. How is the game, you may ask? This, after all, is a review. Well, it's a really fun game. And like most Capcom product put out in the 90s, the game is beautiful to look at. The music could be a bit stronger, but it's not bad, just not overly memorable. The gameplay and controls are again typical Capcom circa CPS1 era. Tight, responsive, and simple to use. The game's length is fairly short, but I wouldn't knock it for that due to the nature of arcade gaming. And on top of that, there are two other games being shared on this one cabinet. Difficulty is gradual, but it does get fairly hard. If you do have a chance to play it, then I recommend you do that. It is a very enjoyable game in the genre, and also I really like the celestial theme it has, including many of the bosses being based off of constellations. Even though I recommend the game, keep in mind that it is part of Three Wonders. And since that is the case, the strength of Midnight Wanderers being added to that only makes me want to recommend it more especially since the two games are so tightly interwoven. As for the third game, Don't Pull, I really have nothing to say about it at the moment, since I must play it longer to give an analysis. Don't Pull is a puzzle game that does not share any storyline or characters with the other two. Anyways, that does it for this review of Chariot. But before you go, I have to announce that this is the final episode of 20 Credit Review, at least for now. I always begin a series with the goal of completing 13 episodes. I stop there and then I give it time to check out the numbers. I'm an extremely small channel so I'm not expecting an astronomical amount of views, but I do need to keep increasing the want for viewers to watch and watch my videos. 
I'm not making any money off this, but rather, it's a hobby. However, even as a hobby, it is still my goal to increase viewership. And if I do end up making some money in the long run, well, then bonus. If not, no big deal. I just want to make episodes and videos that are entertaining. I know I have a long road ahead before I settle into what is eventually going to really work. I want to thank everyone that has watched and those that have subscribed. Who knows, maybe I will produce a season 2 just like I'm about to do with another playthrough. Another playthrough is only coming back because I had an idea on how I can improve it and those ideas are already being implemented in 20 credit playthrough. But even though this series is over, keep an eye out for beat em up. This will be, this will very much be a continuation of 20 credit review, but focus will solely be on the brawler genre. Now if you like what you see here and love arcade gaming, then why not hit that DCO logo and subscribe. Please like and share, and most importantly, thank you for watching.